In this video, I'm going to talk about creating confidence intervals for population proportions as opposed to population means. The overarching setup is going to seem very, very similar. We're going to get a point estimate that's going to be right in the middle of our confidence interval. Then we get our margin of error. We subtract it from our point estimate to get the lower region, the lower limit of our confidence interval. We add it to the point estimate to get the upper limit of our confidence interval. And then we have our interval. Now, since we're dealing with proportions, how we calculate our point estimates is a little bit different. We're not taking the mean of a sample. We look at our sample and we take the total number of successes divided by the amount in the sample and we get our point estimate that way. So to look at example one, it illustrates this. In a survey of 1,000 U.S. teens, 372 said they own smartphones. So 372 said yes in our sample out of 1,000 total. So that gives us a proportion for our sample, which comes out to 37.2%. And that would be our point estimate then that goes right in the middle of our confidence interval. And how we find the margin of error that we are going to use to get the lower and upper bound of our confidence interval, that's going to be a little bit different because we're working with proportions now. The formula is here on page 321. This part of the formula, the Z sub C, has the same exact meaning. It's going to be the Z value, the critical value, based on your level of confidence, whatever C is. We're going to use the normal distribution and look that up. P, this is red P hat, and that's what we just talked about. That's our point estimate. It's the proportion from our sample, whatever our sample data showed. And Q hat is just one minus that. So to give a couple of examples, if our sample proportion was 25%, Q hat is 75%. So if our sample successes was 60%, Q hat is 40%. So it is really the sample proportion of failures, while p hat here is the sample proportion of successes. And then n has the same definition, it is the sample size. So to look at the steps we're going to need to create our confidence interval, they're on page 321. The one verification step is listed here in 3. We can take our sample size times our sample proportion of successes, that needs to be bigger than 5, and also n times q hat needs to be bigger than 5. But then we calculate our margin of error, we're going to add it to our population, or to, sorry, to our sample proportion, and we're going to subtract it from our sample proportion to get to the ends of our confidence interval. So let's walk through example 2 on page 322. It says, use the data in example 1 to construct a 95% confidence interval for the population proportion of U.S. teens who own smartphones. So, let's go back and look at example 1. Here we had a survey of 1,000 U.S. teens, so our sample size is 1,000. 372 said they had a smartphone, and that's our definition of success in this survey. So, our sample proportion is 372 out of 1,000. That's going to be our point estimate for the population proportion. And the number of failures for our sample was 1 minus that. So 1 minus B3 here. 628 out of the 1,000 said they did not have a smartphone, uh, or 0.628 would be the proportion I said that. So we are um, back at example two here, and it says we want a 95% confidence level. So 95, which means our alpha then is 0.05. Now again, be careful when we're finding our critical value, we have to be looking at both tails here. So if we want 5% total in the tails, that's going to be 2.5% in each tail. So we're going to use norm.s.inverse with 0.025 to capture 2.5% in each tail. So if I put an equal sign in front of that, Excel gives me the critical value associated with a 95% level of confidence. 
Now one thing I skipped over, but you should definitely check each time, is that n times p hat's bigger than or equal to 5, and the same with n times q hat. Now, if you take 1,000 times p hat, you get 372, way bigger than 5, and 1,000 times q hat, 628, again, way bigger than 5. So that means we're good to move forward with this process, and we can use uh, the normal distribution uh, to get our critical values like we did um, already here. And so now we want to find our margin of error. We're going to use our formula and we just got to be careful as we type this in to make sure we get everything right. So we want 1.96 multiplied by the square root SQRT and our square root needs to be p hat times q hat. But we want to divide that entire value by n, so make sure you put parentheses for the top part there. I want b3 times b4, p hat times q hat. Close the parentheses for the top part and divide by n, which was b2. And now I can close out the parentheses um, for the square root. And when I hit equals there, I'm going to get a margin of error. It's showing 0.0 because I don't have enough decimals showing. So as I expand the decimals here, um, I get 0 0.030. And so scroll down here for the problem. To get our actual confidence interval, we take the, uh, our point estimate, which is p hat, so equals point. Well, I'll use cell reference equals B3 plus our margin of error. And then we do our point estimate minus our margin of error. And so that gives us the lower limit of our confidence interval and the upper limit of our confidence interval. And so with 95% confidence, you can say that the population proportion of U.S. teens who own a smartphone is between 34.2% and 40.2%. I imagine this book was written a few years ago. I would tend to argue that this has probably changed in the last few years. It seems like everybody has a smartphone these days. But that's how you go through the steps and create a confidence interval.